Hey, it's the PC Doctor in Bowling Green, Mike Denny. Don't be scared. I'm uh, today's project, or project I'm doing today is uh, I'm going to take this Xbox 360 controller and I'm going to try to install this Jabra headset inside it. I'm tired of fighting this thing. Uh, the connection is perfect. The earpiece works and everything else. But um, I don't have the Jabra. I've lost my little Jabra earpiece that goes on here. It makes it uncomfortable for me. And I can get another Jabra if I need to. I've already had to repair this with uh, some of the uh, rubber, uh, liquid rubber. So I'm going to piece this video together. I'm going to start by taking apart my Xbox 360 controller. Um, I've already removed, at an earlier date, I removed the, uh, the motors in each side of the 360 controller to... Um, I don't like vibrate, I don't like that in my games, so I went ahead and removed them already. That was what gave me the idea. I'm going to end up going ahead and drilling a hole in here and installing this microphone somewhere in one side and the earpiece in another and wiring them to the parts they usually just connect to via this. Okay, I'll get uh, second part is up next. Okay. okay, what I've got in here is I've taken apart my 360 controller. The second part of this first thing I did was to remove the battery connector mine just takes like rechargeables and all right uh, and don't forget oh there's I think there's one two three four five six seven screws in the bottom of, of the average X, mini Xbox wireless controllers and the main thing I'm pointing out here is don't forget that there is a hidden screw under this sticker here and it is not here even though you can feel that little dimple a lot better this is where your uh, serial number is just pull that entire sticker off you won't need it all right now over here you see a whole bunch of little screws I have in this edge I have like used a cutting board for this is what I used to solder and work on uh, well those are out of laptops I've worked on before I'm going to uh, replace the uh, security screws that they come that come in the controller with these to make it easier to take it apart in the future and I'm just going to shop through those and see which ones work best for me when I'm putting it back together so I chose them for the length these are machine screws they're not perfect as in they don't have that uh, pla they're not plastic screws but they will work so as long as they're the right length and they go through the, the they have to be for me they have to be exactly the right length now I'm going to move ahead and take the shell apart here I'm trying to do it with one hand. It's, it's kind of difficult. You actually do want to uh, disassemble your controller with um, with the D-pad and the joysticks facing down just to make it easier for you to get it apart without um, messing up the little buttons and the arrangement of those. I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera though, having said that, so I can get it apart um, better. Oh, okay, that was fairly easy. I, I was able to pry it apart. I'm resting it right on the uh, joysticks underneath here. I don't know if you can see that, but there they, it is. And I pried it off apart enough to where I can remove it. You're going to get a little clip here from the uh, battery clip. And then I'm going to, there's how your controller comes apart. Now, the important thing, of course, is not messing something up when you're fixing something else. My controller's on its last legs due to uh, uh, drift. Uh, it's, it's a problem. It has a problem already. And like I said, I've already removed both motors that do the vibrating. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to mod this with my, uh, the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to go in through here and I'm going to try to hook uh, my Jabra up without messing things up. Notice how the Jabra, it's at the microphone, just has a little dot in the end. Okay. That is all I'm going to need in here too. In fact, I may not need anything if these, uh, these clips here go through. I just want it to sound good so I may, I'll probably end up wiring the microphone in here and the headphone in here or some combination of the two. So what, what I'll have is a controller which built in, I won't have anything protruding out, it'll all be internally wired. But I have a mic in one side, the uh, headphone in the other, and I'll be able to hear stuff through my controller. Uh, if I can't, I think the microphone at least will work. So uh, that's what I'm going to have. The next step for the next step for me is going to be to remove uh, this little guy right here, uh, the little plug, 2.5 inch plug from my Xbox controller. Now that I've gotten into it. I'll have to do this by going in and removing each solder point, and then just pressing down and just removing it. 
uh, pulling it off the controller. I want to isolate that sucker, get it all wired and ready, or at least plan my wiring before I, I continue. Okay, I'm back. Basically, it was just a matter of uh, getting, I forgot about those two little clips right there. If you want to really remove it, once you're absolutely sure you've removed all the solder with your like braided copper floss here, uh, everybody's got their own technique. I just hold it down on it. You go ahead and take and punch these out. That way, it'll, well, not like that, but you can see the end result did work. And there, what's holding it after. All right, so I've isolated the little part. part. And also, another thing you don't want to do, and I'm not the world's best solderer, is right here. I'm gonna have to cut out. My head I don't have. I can't uh, focus on that. I'll be you right. It's hard to see, especially with my hand shaking. I'm on such a close up, but right here, you also don't want to end up damaging components. I didn't see till too late. I had like a tiny little diode right here that got a little burned. And of course, these are the very components that have something to do with carrying the audio signal that I'm um, working on. So I hope I didn't burn it too bad. We'll see. This is the best pinout uh, JPEG I could find on the internet. I'll give you the reference in the description. This is what my headset connector looked like inside, the 2.5 millimeter. Most will probably be different, so you'll have to study up and figure out what wire goes where. This is a JPEG of the Jabra microphone, what it looked like inside. The next two shots, I was testing the Jabra headset connector uh, in the Microsoft plug to see, to compare to the JPEG, I took off the uh, Arcade Controller website to compare notes and make sure I was doing it right. I used ultrafine paint pen to mark the audio and microphone pins on the Microsoft, um, the actual PCB. And you see on the near C16 is the ground. I marked it in white. I've gotten the microphone mounted inside the controller. So as I hold it in my palms like this, if as long as my fingers don't get up over it, it actually there's the hole that the microphone will be uh, listening through. It had two two cords coming out of through one uh, plastic wire and actually that sheet is covering two wires one of them is the, the lead for the microphone itself and the other one is the ground so um, according to my chart over there my diagram my pen out diagram um, this is the ground right here let's get this right right there so I put the ground there and the microphone wire itself goes there uh, I don't think I've damaged the board very much in doing the, this but I uh, just I have messed it up before I want to make sure that works get it back together okay uh, I've actually since I am going to be feeding it through this and I've shortened the wires just enough to make sense uh, I have rubber banded this together keeping it below there so that the wires will uh, not have any stress on them and I can solder and work on them. The next thing I'll be working on is the Jabra headphone, the ear the earpiece, which I may have to lengthen because look what I did. That's the end of the wire right there. So it may though, it may you know it's about the same length of wire by the time it wraps around it may be just enough. And I've got two strands here. One of them is a green uh, and the other one uh, appears to be a red so this would probably just be um, a little screw found its way up there, magnet. Uh, this would probably be the ground and the lead also, or the, the negative and the lead. So according to my um, chart over there, all I gotta do is I've painted this with some paint pen, with a paint pen. Uh, this is this is actually green you can't really see it that well but that's the speaker so if you really if you're looking at it it's not that hard um, there's four pins right here uh, I couldn't even see that pin for a second uh, speaker microphone ground and unplugged or it's saying no speaker load so assuming that something was you know plugged up to it you were using the clip that would make a difference because if something nothing's plugged into it it switches it off but if something um, it actually puts it over to your your console speaker but if something is plugged into it it uses the headset here's the actual earpiece 
and I uh, cut it off too short, so uh, I forgot I didn't need that anyway. I had this little uh, Christmassy colored green and red wire that came out of it a while ago, more than enough. It's like about eight inches a piece, so I just needed to mark which wire was which. Uh, it might not even matter, but <clears throat> just in case, uh, I went ahead and, I mean, this is essentially a plus and minus cord on a uh, single speaker, so uh marked it. And get ready to unsolder it. After that, by the time I'm, my soldering iron warms up, the uh, paint paint pen ink will be dry, and I can go ahead and move on to the next step. I'm going to attach those two wires to it, and then I'll figure out the length. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, candle lighter gadget to burn the uh, shielding off that little red wire there, and get ready to blow it out. I mean, uh, you're going to have to make sure you don't start a fire with it or anything stupid, but you're just getting the shielding off of it. And as you can see, it caught really quickly, so that is not fireproof. But basically, that's how you do that. What you're left with, it kind of curled away there. And see if I can grab it. And let's see if I can see the any copper on it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's actually, this one is... Uh, Maybe a little copper, maybe a little alloy, but I'm seeing a lot more steel. All right. Uh, once again, I'm going to do another little bit of piece here. I'm going to cut off. There's about a quarter inch of that, or maybe three-eighths of an inch that's been burned off. So I want the shielding on as much as possible. I want, to, I want it very close. I want like a sixteenth of an inch of it, uh, bare wire, to hold the solder. So I'm going to perch that up there. I'm going to trim it back quite a bit so that there's no shielding. There's not a bunch of shielding off of it. And uh, so basically I'm going to trim it back to right there. See if I can get that in there. There we go. As Carmen would say, there we go. And that's about a sixteenth of an inch. And when I get it finally, there we go so tiny you can't even see it there we go an eighth to a sixteenth is all i want bare because all i'm going to be doing is attach i want just enough to attach it to that uh, red solder point 